Welcome to this Black Cooking Show. This week we're making homemade baguettes with some delicious plum jam and even some homemade butter. These are just gorgeous. Crunch and inside it's the most wonderful fluffy French bread. Morning! Morning. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you ignore it, you'll forget it after a while. Right, morning. Um, we're gonna make baguettes and some plum jam and some homemade butter, because I've got loads of cream in the fridge and um, needs using up. Um, now, I've pre-made the dough. This was made about an hour ago, and it's been sitting by the yogurt with a nice damp cloth over the top. And look, see how big it's got now. Mm. And if you put your finger in there, it will... I really want you to just stick there. Don't stick because it's got in there. You've got all these gorgeous, gorgeous, um, bubbles of carbon dioxide that because of how it's reacted with the yeast and everything. Um, so it wants to be springy. So if you, you've got to be gentle with it because um, if you're not gentle with it and you squish it, you're just going to squish out all those bubbles and that's what gives the bread that gorgeous, lovely texture. So yeah, I mean by all means just pop your finger in it and just fill it but don't squish out the bubbles. Now we've used live yeast um, which smells amazing and one of you said it was squeaky yeah. does yeah it feels squeaky doesn't it um, you can use dried yeast obviously but this needs to be kept in the fridge and this has got about a week and a bit shelf life on it okay 350 grams of water stick your finger in there because that's room temperature so it's not hot it's not really really icy cold out of the town no the air bubbles in thing are not due to any reactions. Well, they are sort of. It's not due to how the re yeast reacts with the flour and water. It's Stop the saying that. No, no, no. It's the yeast respiring, which yes, is in itself a reaction, but the yeast does not react with anything. It makes a reaction. It's a catalyst. How many up to? Pull it away. I've folded it over. Oh. Pull it away. Fold it over. I want, I want to hear a slapping sound as it kind of comes back. Try not to tear it like I just did. It will stick to your fingers, and it will stick to your fingers until hey guys, it starts guys, guys, to come and together. And it should. You've got to keep working it and do it as quickly as you can. So it will get more and more sticky. But stretch it, fold it. Do not add any. Flour. No, you we start off with it. We do not do this in the bowl, we do it on a bit of granite. Right. Is it supposed to get like the, the air in it? Yes, as you fold it and turn it over, you're basically trapping more and more air and you're stretching it out so that the air that you're putting in, you're actually getting like bigger bubbles of air in it. Mm -hmm. So it's tiny. And it's boring. Oh, brilliant, just keep working it, the more you work oh, it. Jamie, I can see that, it's starting to not be as sticky, yeah, isn't it? Jamie, that's absolutely beautiful. That's exactly how it should look, it's that gorgeous shape. Yeah. I'm going to pop that in the bowl and, um, and then let that rest for a bit. So each batch should make around about 12 mini baguettes or one Baguette. Large baguette. Well, a normal size baguette that you buy in a shop. Yeah. You turn it upside down and then you want to get it into a ball. So you just turn it and bring it in. Turn it so it's upside down. Really Brilliant, Sophia. Creepy. And then you keep tucking it in so you get a beautiful, beautiful ball of dough. And to prove these at home, you need to put them somewhere warm. In there, it's fantastic. Right. How can you cheat and make your oven turn your oven into a steam oven? Put it over boiling water. Put water in it. Put, Put water, water in it. Sprinkle water on the tray. You could you could sprinkle water on the tray. If you've got one of those um, water atomizers that you spray leaves with, give it a really really good wash out first, um, and make sure it's absolutely spotlessly clean. Then you can at it, spray that in the oven. If you do that, get an adult to do it because it will immediately create steam and it could burn 
very, very easily burning, so get an adult to do that. Or the other way of doing it is to put a heat proof casserole dish or a deep roasting dish with some water in, in the bottom of the oven. And that will just evaporate as it's cooking and it will create a steamy oven. It's just a chiller. Yeah. Guys, cool. they do look fabulous. They're going to taste great as well. Right, I think that's probably... You the jam. The jam's been cooking for about half an hour. You need to make sure you get an adult to do this. You don't go anywhere near the jam pot because it could be very, very hot. I have a saucer in the freezer so it's gone really, really cold. And then get an adult to put a teaspoon of jam on the plate. Leave it for about a minute. And then if you move the spoon across, it should wrinkle. Can you see that wrinkles? So that means that the jam has reached setting point. So now we can take that off the heat and uh, it leave wet? it to cool a wee bit.